In this video, I'm going to reveal the surprising reason why humans are more likely to choke and die, and also why you're more likely to have a nighttime breathing problem called obstructive sleep apnea. Hi, I'm Dr. Stephen Park, ENT surgeon and sleep medicine doctor, on a mission to help people who are struggling to get a better night's sleep. The core principle of my sleep breathing paradigm is that all modern humans are susceptible to breathing problems, especially at night, for the reasons I'll go over in this video. I'm going to go over three main goals. Number one is what choking is and how it's defined. Number two is why humans can't breathe or swallow well. And number three, why humans have obstructive sleep apnea. And in parts two or three of this video series, I'll reveal why this problem is getting much worse and what you can do about it so that you can breathe better, sleep better, and enjoy living life again. First, let's go over what choking means. The most common definition you're familiar with is a sudden blockage or restriction of airflow, fluid, um, water, breathing, uh, even cars on a highway. Another common definition is when you freeze up due to fear or anxiety, such as when you're speaking publicly or active in sports. Now relevant to this video, it means sudden trouble breathing, swallowing, or speaking. You can also have choking due to a foreign body or food stuck in the windpipe or the esophagus. Another common definition is a lump in the throat or feeling like there's something stuck in the throat. So now that we've defined what choking is, Number two, why humans have so many breathing problems. Early in my career, over 20 years ago, I saw a lot of patients with chronic sinusitis who ended up needing sinus surgery if they didn't respond to medical therapy. One interesting thing that I noted was that almost any one of these patients that needed surgery snored like crazy and they had trouble sleeping. So what I did was to order sleep studies on every patient that was scheduled to undergo sinus surgery. And surprisingly, 80% of people with chronic sinusitis who snored had sleep apnea. So when I treated the sleep apnea before considering surgery, most of these patients didn't need surgery anymore. That's when I came across this paper by Dr. Terence Davidson called The Great Leap Forward, The Anatomic Basis for the Acquisition of Speech and Obstructive Sleep Apnea. Now what he described was a revelation for me. And he described three important concepts I'm going to describe. He noted that for the most part, only humans snore and have sleep apnea, with the exception of flat-faced dogs, but they're bred for that purpose and we're the only mammals that have complex speech and language ability. Now, it describes three important craniofacial concepts that I'm going to describe. The first one is something called Kleinerinke, and this is where the mid face, the upper and lower jaws, is more protuberant to the front and lower animals. And as you move up the evolutionary chain, it goes underneath the enlarging neurocranium. So it goes from forward protuberant to lower down and backwards down this way while the brain is getting larger and larger. So the mid face and lower jaw is called the splanchnocranium, and the brain cavity is called the neurocranium. And notice what happens in real life. This is the a profile view of a woman who has somewhat of a, an ideal face. And notice how the cheekbones are right about here, which is well forward of the eye, which the, the line down the uh, eye, which is right about here. And the cheekbone is over here. Whereas in this woman, the cheekbone is right underneath the eye and her mid face, her chin is pushed back. So this angle here is greater than 90 degrees, whereas here it's about 90 degrees. Ideally, it should be less than 90 degrees. Uh, and her chin is much more forward. It should be this, uh, this ideal around this line down here, as opposed to in this woman, it's pushed back a lot right here. And notice the hump on the nose. That's not from new bone growth. That's actually because the mid face here didn't push forward far enough. So what happens is that the junction right here between the bone and the cartilage, it just kind of bends back, creating this hump on the nose. Another concept is something called anterior migration of the foramen magnum. Notice in the chimpanzee, the foramen magnum is the opening that the spinal cord comes through from the brain. You know, it's right here in the tiny arrow there. But as you go down to humans, it moves more and more forward over here, while at the same time, the mid face and the lower jaw is moving, rotating downwards uh, and underneath the brain. So um, this space right here, where the airway is, gets more and more narrow. And lastly, you have what's called laryngeal descent. Now in the chimpanzee, what you see is that the voice box here, with the epiglottis, which is the topmost part of the voice box, overlaps the soft palate, the back of the soft palate right here. Now in human adults, there is a separation here because the voice box drops, so the larynx the voice box descends, goes down underneath the tongue, whereas in chimpanzees and human infants, it's behind the tongue just like this. 
and scientists have said that Laringe descent was necessary for complex speech and language development. And it makes sense because you need all these fluffy tissues to vocalize and sing, along with the enlarging brain. Now, this is a very idealized version of what a human mouth looks like. And you'll never see something like this in modern humans anymore because people don't have large mouths like this guy. And you don't see this space behind the tongue because since the mouth is so small, the tongue sits way up here. And you have to press down with the tongue to press it really hard. And then they end up gagging because you're pressing so hard. And what you're also going to see is that high arch palate. The roof of the mouth is going to be very high. And the molars are going to be much more narrow, closer together. And this is something that we were taught in medical school, that the voice box drops from the level of C3 at birth. So the cricoid cartilage, which is the lowest part of the voice box, begins at the bottom of C3 when you're born. And by the time you're age 20, right here, it drops down to the bottom of C6. But notice what happens from age 20 to 80, it drops a full vertebral body length from the bottom of C6 to C7. And if this person lived to 100, it probably would go down even more and more potential for airway problems. So what this implies is that as your voice box continues to drop, your airway gets more and more destabilized. Our faces have been slowly shrinking throughout evolution for thousands of years in three dimensions, side to side, front to back, and top to bottom as well. And our faces are getting more and more narrow and taller viewed from the front. Now here's an example of some famous celebrities from the early 1900s um, until I think the, the 1980s or so, some older celebrities um, and some more modern celebrities. I think that's Greta Garbo and uh, Cary Grant and Madonna and Christopher Reeve. Notice they all had very wide jaws and prominent cheekbones. Now notice with these more younger, these more contemporary celebrities, notice that they all have very triangular faces and longer faces. So number three, why do we have so much sleep apnea in this country and all the other developed countries? It's not just due to poor diet and obesity, since poor breathing leads to poor sleep, which leads to obesity. And I'm going to argue that it's because our faces and airways are getting smaller and smaller. We did okay for tens of thousands of years by eating naturally off the land and with no processed foods. And there are huge benefits of speech and language development, such as amazing cultures, uh, multiple languages, great literature, music, the arts, and multiple scientific advancements. We still had breathing and swallowing problems occasionally, but it wasn't that bad. But gradually over the last few hundred years, our faces began to shrink due to advances in modern technology uh, and agriculture and what we eat and how we eat our food. Unfortunately, it's accelerated dramatically in the past 50 years. These concepts are so important to understand if you want to avoid many of the medical consequences of having a small face along with dental crowding. And that's because a small face will lead to dental crowding, crooked teeth, and much smaller upper airways. It's even more important if you're thinking about having children or about to have grandchildren. I talk about why this is happening in much more detail in video number two of this series titled Seven Surprising Reasons Why Your Face Is Shrinking Here, and then part three of this series, Seven Ways to Prevent Your Face From Shrinking Over Here. If you value the information you learned in this video, I'd really appreciate it if you press the thumbs up button and subscribe to this channel. Thanks so much, and I'll see you in the next video.